Hello brothers and sisters, this is Pastor Angelo Cantuba once again for our 14th uh, devotional in this uh, enhanced community quarantine period. And uh, I'm excited to uh, share to you my devotion. And uh, this is um, very significant to every one of us since uh, we are all being perfected in Christ. And uh, this particular topic that we will uh, study is in regards with his being a father to us and in his discipline to us and uh, how it benefits us to be disciplined by our father so let's all uh, bow and pray father we thank you for this morning we pray that you grant us wisdom and knowledge and a teachable and humble heart so that we may learn lord from you and uh, learn your attributes and uh, learn how to live like Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy that you have showered upon us and you allow us, Lord, to uh, breathe and uh, enjoy this life that you've given us. Though it is not perfect in this world, but we enjoy your graces, Lord. We enjoy your presence in our lives. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text is in Hebrews 12, verses... Uh, Four to thirteen. Uh, I will not continue yung text muna natin kahapon sa James. Preempt ko muna yon para medyo may sigit natin tong understanding natin towards discipline. Kasi alam ko ano, uh, yesterday and the previous days medyo focus natin sa sin and how we uh, repent, uh, how we turn ourselves uh, back to God through the power of His Holy Spirit. And uh, somehow, uh, iniisip ko rin na uh, maybe some of us may not fully understand bakit natin ito pinag-uusapan. Why is it important to discuss or to study repentance and sin and the holiness of God? Um, ito, ito yung isa sa mga anchor bakit natin uh, makita yung repentance, turning away from sin, yung pain na nakinokos ng rebuke. And also, yung restoration na binibigay ng Panginoon. Ito yung anchor na nagbibigay sa atin ng correct perspective. So, basahin ko lang po, uh, Hebrews 12 verse 4 to the following verses. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have, and have you completely forgotten the, this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone who accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they th- thought best, but God discipl- disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a heart. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that lame may not be disabled but rather be healed. Pagpalain pong pagkabasa ng salita ng Diyos. Uh, nais ko pong uh, ibahagi ito, no? napakagandang mensahe mula sa Panginoon. And... Uh, encouraging and at the same time challenging for all of us. Una yung state dito uh, ng writer ng Hebrews, sabi niya, in our struggle against sin as Christians, hindi pa tayo dumating sa punto na nag uh, buwis tayo ng dugo o kumbaga to the point of death yung uh, pag resist natin ng sin. And this is a reality. Whenever we see ourselves falling into sin, nakita natin na hindi siya ganung kalaking struggle na pinut up natin or 
hindi natin masasabi honestly na talagang Panginoon nilabanan ko talagang talagang tinakbuhan ko yung kasalanan well it's possible na magawa natin yon kagaya ng ginawa ni uh, tawag dito ni uh, Joseph in the Old Testament Joseph the dreamer nangyari sa kanyang buhay na talagang tinakbuhan niya yung temptation and it's possible for us also to run again, again uh, run, run from uh, temptation and sin but the petty things na kinokomit natin sa paningin natin ng mga sins, yung akala natin baliwala lang, they haven't really put up enough fight. Hindi natin nare-realize yun until makita na natin yung resulta ng kasalanan na ginawa natin. And when we realize how uh, how deep we've sinned against God, how uh, heavy it was, the gravity of sin, then we are convicted by the Holy Spirit and the result should be repentance. But at the same time, we must remember this. That in verse 5, sabi, And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do, make, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when He rebukes you. Sa pag- pagbagsak natin sa kasalanan, Lagi pong may disiplina ang Panginoon. Especially if we have a hard heart. Yung tumigas na yung puso natin dahil hindi natin pinapansin yung uh, nangyayari sa buhay natin. At pag talagang kumilos ang Panginoon, kahit pag gaano katigas ang ating puso, ang katigas ng ating isi, ng ulo at isipan, no? darating pa rin tayo sa punto na may kita natin na tayo nire-rebuke ng Panginoon. Dinidisiplina tayo. At ang encouragement dito ang sabi, do not lose heart when He rebukes you. That is an encouragement. But moreover than that, we must remember not to make light of the Lord's discipline. Huwag natin itake na maliit lang na bagay yung disiplina ng Panginoon. Dapat mapagpasalamat tayo kung hindi natin na, da- na, na tatanggap what we deserve. That's grace. na dapat eh, sa kasalanan natin eh, matindi ang, ang parusa pero binibayaan pa tayo ng Panginoon. Kaya nga na sabi ng isang theologian, I forgot who it was, sabi, if the consequences of our sin comes after we commit a sin, it won't be fun at all. Sabi, kapag ang resulta daw o kabayaran ng kasalanan ay eh matanggap natin pagkatapos ng pagkatapos natin i-commit ang isang kasalanan, hindi natin may enjoy o hindi magiging masaya ang pag-commit ng kasalanan. Kasi ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Pero ganun nga, no? Since tayo ay mga anak na ng Panginoon, if we are regenerated, born again, we are saved, then we must be encouraged and at the same time, not take light the Lord's discipline. Sabi po dito, do not lose heart when He rebukes you because the Lord disciplined the one He loves and He chastens anyone He accepts as His Son. In disciplina po, eh, pagpapakita po ito, hindi ng punishment in a sense na uh, pinarurusahan ka dahil iyan ang katumbas ng kasalanan mo. It's a different way of punishment kung punishment ang term na gagamitin natin which is ang kaparusahan po sa hindi anak sa, sa mga hindi mananampalataya it is terminal it is unto da- damnation ibig sabihin ito ay magdadala sa kanila o magbubulid sa kanila sa apoy sa, sa dagat-dagat ang apoy but this discipline this punishment coming from our father who loves us is different in a sense that it is restorative binabago tayo nito at binibuild up tayo instead of being broken down uh, not to be recovered again kabalik na po no tayo ay dinidisiplina pinapalo to build us up sabi po sa verse 6 because the Lord disciplines the one He loves dahil dinidisiplina ng Panginoon ang kanyang minamahal kung hindi tayo nakaranas ng disiplina ng Panginoon in any form or way, hindi tayo mahal ng Diyos. Pero ang sabi po dito, and He chastens everyone He accepts as His Son. Ano yung chasten? Yung chastisement, pagtutuwid, pag-aayos ng ating mga buhay. So, kailangan natin tingnan yung tamang perspective. 
if it is chastisement, kinokorekt tayo sa ating mga pagkakamali. Iba naman po yung trial. Sinusubok tayo kung gaano katataga ang ating pananampalataya. So bago natin sabihin sa ating mga sarili, grabe tong pagsubok na inaabot ko, yung yung trials na nararanasan ko ngayon. Let us evaluate ourselves. Is there sin that needs to be purged in our life? Meron bang kasalanan na kailangan matanggal sa ating buhay, maisuko sa Panginoon? Kung meron, hindi po yan isang form ng trial. But it is chastisement. It is discipline. Kinokorekt tayo ng Panginoon. So ang response dapat sa chastisement or discipline is repentance. Repentance. Ang response naman po sa trial, eh, ito po ay uh, long suffering or yung patience endurance no ito po yung binibuild sa atin kaya kailangan po natin makita dito na kapag may mga pagkakataon na tayo ay nidisiplina ng Panginoon sa anumang paraan ang payo ng hindi, hindi pala payo no It, ito yung dapat kakitaan sa atin sa verse 7 sabi endure hardship as discipline god is treating you as his children endure hardship pagtiyagaan natin yung mga paghihirap na dinadaanan natin maaring hindi ito kaparusahan or uh, o disiplina in a certain sin but in the whole totality of our character na maaring ma-pride tayo mataas ang ang mga ere natin na hinahambol tayo ng Panginoon then that is part of his discipline And ang utos sa atin to endure hardship. Yung mga paghihirap na hinaha, hinaharap natin ngayon, dinidisiplina tayo nito. Tinatama tayo nito. It builds us up, not tears us down. Kaya ang sabi po, for verse 7b, For what children are not disciplined by their father? Meron bang anak na hindi dinidisiplina ng kanilang ama? In verse 8, If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate. Not true sons and daughters at all. Napakalinang po nun. Kung di ka ito dinidisiplina, gaya ng lahat naman ay dinidisiplina, ay maaaring hindi ka talaga anak. So, nandito rin yung urge sa atin na check natin, kamusta ba? Ano ba yung buhay natin? No? Laging may ganun. Pansin nyo, ang tema lagi ng aking uh, aking mga devotion eh, pag, pag uh, evaluate sa sarili, pag, pag repent, mga spiritual discipline kasi ito po yung dapat natin tutukan sa ngayon no? um, meron tayong panahon na gawin ito in verse 8 sabi uh, sa B uh, then you are not legitimate not true sons and daughters at all so meron palang hindi totoong mananampalataya meron pa talaga illegitimate uh, ch- children kumbaga no? so we don't want to be like that nais natin na kahit naghihirap tayo in any suffering Gaya na sinabi ko, maybe hindi ito specific para sa isang kasalanan, but for character building, building up our, our, our character as being Christ-like. For example, no, ako I'm training sa boxing ngayon. Lagi ko na example to kasi ito yung nararanasan ko. I have to train my body physically. I-disciplina siya. Kundi, ano mangyari? Masasayang yung pinagpagurang ko. For how many weeks, how many days na ako'y nagpapagod physically tapos kung wala akong disiplina sa pagkain babalik lang lahat ng mga nilus kong timbang so that's part of the discipline na binibigay ng Panginoon training us to be Christ-like sa so verse 9 sabi moreover we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it how much more should we su- should we submit to the father of spirits and live ano pong ibig sabihin nito meron tayong mga magulang na nagdisiplina tayo dinisiplina tayo and it commanded us to respect them revere them fear them at ito rin po ang ninanais na maging resulta ng Panginoon sa buhay natin that we should revere God that He is able to discipline His children discipline in a form of uh, calamity in a form of rebuke or anumang paraan binabago tayo ng, ng disiplina ng Panginoon So, ang sabi po sa um, 11, nireiterate dito, sabi, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later, later on. However, 
it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Ano daw sabi? Walang disiplina na parang maganda sa simula sa kasalukuyang nangyayari. Walang walang makita tayong parang asaya ba disiplina. We, we, we don't uh, understand it at that very moment nararanasan natin. Pero kung tayong magtsatsaga, no? Sabi, magiging masakit ito. Ito ay painful, magiging masakit para sa atin, but later on, ano yung reward? Sabi, it produces a harvest of righteousness. Tinutuwid po tayo nito. Tinatama po tayo nito. So, hindi man ito addressing sa sin, specifically, but also in our character building, kagaya ngayon, kung nagigipit tayo, no? tinuturoan tayo ng Panginoon na huwag tayong maging uh, tawag dito, mga um, hindi mabuting katiwala o hindi mga good stewards ng resources ng Panginoon. Ito yung panahon na maraming tinuturo sa atin to trust God not on, or, on our uh, capacity. Hindi sa sarili nating kakayanan, kundi sa Panginoon. No? And sa dulo po, ito yung napakagandang sinabi dito, sabi, sa verse 12, Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. What does it mean to strengthen our feeble arms and weak knees? Ano pong sinasabi dito? Kailangan po natin maintindihan, uh, kinote po ito sa Old Testament in Isaiah 35. Gusto ko pong basahin, no? Mula uh, verse 3, Hanggang four. Ang sabi po, Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Ito po yung kabuuan ng uh, context ng verse na keynote from Isaiah. No? Makita natin na after sabi discipline, merong binigay sa ating responsibility na yung response natin is to strengthen our feeble arms and weak knees. Ano po bang ginagawa ng tuhod at ng mga braso? Ito po yung nagbibigay sa atin ng kakayan ng tumayo, kumilos, gumalaw, to act. No? So ang responsibility natin pag nandyan yung disiplina ng Panginoon eh magpakatatag tayo at magpakalakas. Bakit po? Sabi po sa verse 4 ng Isaiah 35, Be strong, do not fear. Your your God will come and He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Meron pong paghihiganti ang Panginoon laban sa ano? Sa mga bagay o sa mga elemento o sa mga kaaway na nagnanais sumira sa kanyang mga anak. But that divine retribution also is against those who claim to be believers, who claim to be sons and daughters of God, but is not. Hindi ba totoong mananampalataya? Kaya ito po, ang comfort nito ay para po sa mga tatalagang nananampalataya kay Kristo. Dahil siya ay magliligtas sa atin. Pag bumalik ang Panginoon, pag dumating ang kanyang tulong, hindi natin siya kaaway, ngunit siya ang ating tagapagligtas. Pero may responsibility tayo. That responsibility is to strengthen our feeble arms and weak knees. Para saan po? Meron po tayong gagawin. There will be an action. There will be a mission. There is a harvest field waiting for us. Kaya sa pagdidisiplina po, dapat pinalalakas ang ating mga braso at ang ating mga tuhod. Dahil meron tayong lalakarin, may tatahakin tayong langdas, meron tayong gampanin na gagawin. Sa verse 13, sabi po, Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled but rather healed. Ang sabi po, Make level paths uh, for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled but rather be healed. Ano pong sinasabi dito? Tandaan po natin, lahat it, it, ito, kagaya po nitong verse na ito, no? it is quoted in Proverbs 4.26. Ang sabi po dito, Give careful thought to the paths of your feet, for your feet, and be steadfast in all your ways. Lamay po natin yung verse 27. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Ito po yung sinasabi. Bakit tayo magpapatatag ng ating mga tuhod at ng ating mga braso? Para po maging maayos ang ating lalakarin. 
matama po ang ating mga landas, maging tapat po tayo sa ating tinatayuan, sa ating nilalakaran, continuing in the narrow path that Christ has set before us. Being steadfast in all our ways. Ang sabi, do not turn to the right or to the left, keeping our foot from evil. Huwag tayong maliligaw ng landas. Para saan po? For the benefit of those who are lame, for those who are weak and disabled, so that sabi, hindi sila ma-disable, hindi sila mag-stumble, but rather gumaling sila. Sapagkat, mga kapatid, ang konteksto po nito sa kabuan, atras po tayo. Verse 1 ng chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the, rise, the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such, op- such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. An example po dito ay si Cristo, at ang tinatukoy po dito ay kailangan tayong uh, maging aware that there are such a great cloud of expectators, witnesses. May dalawang uh, uh, paliwanag po dito. Yung isa, yung great cloud of witnesses are the, are the, the uh, fathers of faith na nabanggit sa mga follow, uh, previous verses. Sila Abraham, Moses, yung mga uh, naunang mga saints in the Old Testament na makita natin na sila ay nakatingin uh, waiting for our witness or expecting for the work of God to be fulfilled in our lives. And at the same time, the other perspective na titignan natin, hindi lang yun ang tinutukoy, not that witness na nag, uh, bibigay sa atin ng, kumbaga, ng boost na ah, sila nandoon na tayo makakarating din sa kanilang kinalalagay. Hindi lang po yun. But also, those people around us who are looking up to us, mga kapatiran natin, mga hindi mananampalataya rin ay nakatingin sa atin. And whenever we walk the narrow path and we strengthen our feeble arms and weak knees, we are edifying one another. We are edifying the church. At paano ito mangyayari? It's only through the word of God. His discipline is His precepts. Ang disiplina niya ay ang kanyang salita. Ito nagtutuwid sa atin. Thy word is a lap unto our feet and the light unto our path ng isa ating direksyon, ang salita ng Diyos, ang ating tanglaw sa ating daraanan. So brothers and sisters, let us enjoy God's discipline in our lives. Whether it's chastisement because of our sin or character building, let us be thankful because God, our Father, who saved us, loves us so much. God bless you all, brothers and sisters, and be encouraged in following Christ and enjoy your day. God bless you all. Let us pray. Father, strengthen us, Lord. We are weak people if not for your grace so we pray that you give us a correct perspective in the view of your discipline to us though it is painful though we don't see the benefit at the moment lord but we pray that you give us the steadfastness a strength to endure help us lord to strengthen our feeble arms and weakness so that we may stand and walk on the narrow path and set an example for our brothers and sisters a good example, Lord, that you've given also to us. We thank you for everything. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. And uh, um, keep walking the narrow path.